Okay, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to coil build a bowl. First step, once you get your clay, is we're going to learn how to knead the clay. This means you're just going to keep pressing the clay over and over to get out all the air bubbles. So, one way to do this is to make kind of a spoon with one hand and a spoon with the other, and you're just going to use the heels of your hand to press forward and then you pull it back. You just keep pressing and pulling. It's going to make kind of the shape of a ram head is the way I like to describe it. It'll look like this and you're going to keep going for at least a couple minutes if not more depending on the size of your clay. The reason you need is because when you put it in the kiln if there's a lot of air bubbles your piece will explode. So I already kneaded this some um, before. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a slab for the base for our bowl. So you take off a chunk of clay and you're going to flatten it out on a nice smooth surface. And I like to pull it up off that surface and then lay it down again to make sure both sides are evenly flat. Once you've got a nice evenly thickness, even thickness on your slab, you're going to cut out the shape that you want or how big of a size you want for the bottom of your bowl. You can use specific cutting devices for this. You can Measure it out with a bowl first to make sure that it's the right size and the right shape. <clears throat> Once you have your desired shape, what you're going to do is peel away the excess clay. And you can reform this. This is still dry. Just put it back with your other clay and you're probably going to have to knead that again. So. Peel it off your surface, make sure the whole thing is an even thickness, and smooth down the edges a little bit. Okay, so you're going to take off a chunk of clay and just start rolling it in your hands, just like you're building snakes, like a preschooler. And then you're going to put it on your table, roll some more. You can make these coils as long as you want, um, as thin as you want, but I would advise you to make them about the same thickness that your bottom slab is. It makes a nice consistency through the whole piece. And make sure, just like the slab, that the coil is consistent um, thickness throughout. Okay, now that I've got a nice even coil, I'm going to take my slab back and there's different ways to do this. You can go straight onto the clay because it's still wet. It should adhere fine. Or you can score beforehand. Okay, now that you have your coil built and you're ready to score, you get a wooden dowel with a point on the end. This makes it pretty easy to score. So what you're going to do is you create little hash marks all the way around the edge that you connect, you're going to connect the clay to. This is most helpful for when you're working with drier clay that doesn't really want to stick. This clay is plenty wet, so it would adhere fine. Okay, now that I've scored, it looks like this, just a lot of little hash marks all the way around. So then you take your coil, roll it all the way around, and just kind of place it so that it's the right size because you don't want an awkward gap, and you rip off the excess. And you can connect it now to the base, or you can wait. The first one I like to connect to the base immediately because it just makes it easier than reaching in later. And that, you just use your finger pretty much, and you just pull down a little bit of clay 
all the way along the edge and connect it to that bottom piece. And it's so wet, the clay is still wet, so it should connect pretty well. Okay, and then what you do is you just keep coiling. Make sure your coils are all thin and make sure that you layer your coils in a way that will create your bowl shape. <coughs> Don't just stack them on top of each other because then that will just create like a cup. And when you're coiling, the important thing to remember is to spread out, is to move back and forth with your hand so that you can make sure the entire thing is even. Okay, I'm going to build mine up and then we're going to talk about finishing smoothness. Okay, so once you've built up your bowl, obviously this one's pretty small, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, it works. The next thing to do is honestly to let it dry a little bit. Right now it's way too wet to work with, which is really good when you're building it up. You want it to be wet, but once it's done, you want it to be a little dry once the form is done so that you can shape it. So you'll take your metal rib and what you do is once it, uh, it's at a semi-dry state, it's called leather hard, where it's still flexible, but it doesn't, it's not going to like leave a fingerprint when you press in it. You're going to take your metal rib and you're going to rub it along the edge. And right now mine is still very wet, so you can't really see, but it'll take off the unevenness of the clay and it'll smooth out that surface and make everything a nice even thickness. You can run your fingers along with it to make sure that it's nice and even thickness. And then comes wrapping up time. So when you're done, you have to wrap up your work. Air is the number one enemy of clay. It will dry it out, and if this gets bone dry, then it is no longer usable. Can't work with it at all. The only time you want it bone dry is right before you put it in the kiln. So, make sure your bag doesn't have any big holes in it, or you can just use a plastic sheeting, whatever you want. Some people like to wrap it with wet paper towels. I think that if you just wrap it up sufficiently with plastic, it will be okay. If you're looking for that leather dry state, then you might want to leave it out for a little bit, or maybe just don't wrap it up too well, but never leave it overnight. Then, if you come back the next day, and it's a little too wet, Remember, I mean a little too dry, remember the slipping and scoring method. So you're going to score it and then add some water all the way around and it'll help connect it. And that is how you coil a bowl.